The Bible says you should beware of false prophets. And how can you identify false prophets? The Holy Spirit wants to help you to stay in the Word of God. Stay with the, what the Word says. Build relationship with the Holy Spirit. Get to know the Holy Spirit for yourself. And as you walk with the Holy Spirit, as you depend on the Holy Spirit, listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will help you to escape the lies of false prophets. When the last days, many have been deceived, many have been deceived, many have been deceived, all in the name of Christianity, all in the name of religion. Let's look at this critical subject tonight, how to identify a false prophet. Believe me, what you are going to hear will change your life. What you are going to hear tonight, the Holy Spirit himself will minister to you. We are in the last days. We are in the last days. Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. Thank you. As we sit at the feet of Jesus to learn, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Circumcise our hearts. Let your word have free course in us. Let your word change our lives. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance from oppression of the devil. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. How to identify a false prophet. Who is a false prophet? A false prophet is he the one that is attacking the faith of the believers or is he the one that is making just of the faith of the believers who is a false prophet the word of god will tell us exactly who a false prophet is but let's start from the book of uh, matthew chapter 8 chapter 7 i beg your pardon 7 from verse 15 this is what we have there how to identify a false prophet just stay with me i know the holy spirit has something for you Beware of false prophets. This is how Jesus, this is how this word of Jesus is coming to us. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Jesus said, You can know a false prophet by his fruits. You may gather for grace from the thorn bushes or figs from the thistles. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree is bear bad fruit. Don't conclude yet that, oh, I know what a good tree is. I know what a bad tree is. Just stay with me. A good tree cannot be a bad fruit, nor can a bad tree be a good fruit. Every tree that does not be a good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know a false prophet by his fruits. Jesus said, you need to watch out for the fruit of a prophet. The fruit a prophet manifests. Said, watch out for the fruits, watch out for the lives of the prophet. Don't be carried away by the things he does. Don't be carried away by the that, let me call it welfare. Don't be carried away by religious uh, things to help suffer humanity. He said, no, don't be carried away by these things. As important as they are, Jesus said false prophets you can know them know a false prophet by the fruits the fruits the fruits we are going to go beyond this just stay with me we are going to go beyond this false prophets the fruits when he did say the fruits if he jesus had said the fruits that would have been the fruit of the spirit which is love but he said fruits he said fruits so fruits here is different from the fruits of the spirit because in Galatians what we are told there is the fruit of the spirit is not are is not the fruit not the fruits the Galatians that talk, chapter 5 that talks about the fruit of the spirit is love then love takes us to every other thing that we come through love patience long suffering joy all of that now in John chapter 4 first John chapter 4 which is actually the emphasis of this uh, this broadcast or our discussion tonight is this beloved first john chapter 4 verse 1 beloved do not believe every spirit this is it do not believe every spirit 
But test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So Jesus Christ, I beg your pardon, John the Beloved is saying here that it is your responsibility as a believer not to believe every spirit. That you have to know how to test the spirit. The first thing he says is this, do not believe every spirit because once you believe your mind is open and now that prophet can feed you with his lies and once you believe the lies you become his captive you become his slave so here he saying to us do not believe every spirit this is the problem with professor theory believers they tend to believe anything they hear anything they see as long as the name of jesus christ is there as long as they call on the name of Jesus Christ. So people can do all kind of things they want to do as long as they call the name of Jesus Christ. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. That, that one calls the name of Jesus Christ does not make him a servant of Jesus Christ or a friend of Jesus Christ. Because from servanthood to friendship. Does not mean. Then he, he goes on to say, don't, he says, Test the spirit. The question is, how do I test the spirit? How do I test the spirit? How do I examine the spirit? How do I check out the spirit? The spirit at work in the prophet, in the pastor, in the believer. How do I know it's not the spirit of God? How do I know it is the spirit of God? Here the word of God is saying that it is your responsibility to test the spirit. You will not have anybody to blame. You will not hold anybody for your failure for being taken advantage of by false prophets because the word of god says test the spirit don't be carried away by the works by the activities in the ministry by the things that you are seeing in the ministry don't be carried away he said test the spirit we're going to see that but i quickly want to tell you that you can simply ask the holy spirit holy spirit what is going on in this ministry holy spirit what is going on in the life of this man of god who is he who is this man of God? Listen, Holy Spirit will never lie to you. Holy Spirit will never deceive you. You know why? He loves you so much. He's your helper. He's your teacher, your strengthener, your advocate, your comforter, your, your standby, your intercessor. One that is all this. One person, one personality that wants to help you in the area of uh, praying for you as your intercessor, standby. The one that is always standing by to help you, comforter. Tell me why the Holy Spirit will lie to you. He will not lie to you. The Holy Spirit wants to help you so that you will not be deceived. You know, Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, I just said that deceive. I know the Holy Ghost is not helping me here. And I remember that Jesus Christ in his teaching, Matthew 24, verse 4, listen to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to them, to his disciples, take heed that no one deceives you. So Jesus said, if you want to know the signs of the coming of the Son of Man, the signs of uh, of uh, the coming at the end of the age, say, the first thing you watch out for is deception. And you know for yourself that today in the church, there is so much deception, so much deception. As a matter of fact, for some believers, they can't even differentiate truth from uh, falsehood. Everything is the same for some. You know why it is so? Because they don't know the Holy Spirit. They don't know the Word of God. They don't know the Holy Spirit. Some, they know the Bible, but they don't know the Holy Spirit. And I keep saying it, every believer must know the Holy Spirit. Not, it should, must. Must. Because Jesus said, it is for your good, your advantage. It is for your, your benefit that I go away. If I do not go away, the one you need now, the Holy Ghost, will not come. This is Jesus Christ here, the Son of God. Jesus Christ himself said, the one you need now, the one that will tell you about me, the one that will reveal me, the one that will draw attention to me, not to himself, will not come. But when I go away, that the Holy Ghost will come. Today, it is appalling, very disheartening, that many, many believers do not know the Holy Spirit. Do you not know? And false prophets are really deceiving them by giving people symbols of the Holy Spirit instead of teaching them about the personality of the Holy Spirit. You see, these false prophets, they are good at making people, believers, to believe in the symbols. Symbols like water, 
symbols like uh, like uh, wind, dove, rain, cloud. They are good at doing all this thing and they've actually gone beyond symbols and now they have invented what they call matos. Matos. So people would go, we use padlock, they will use broom, they will use African native pots, they will use salt, and they just tell you as long as when we call on the name of Jesus, something will happen to you. Believe in us, believe we are anointed, we are called. But I want you to know the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is more than enough. The Holy Ghost is more than enough. You cannot have the Holy Ghost. I will see holding on to salt, holding on to sand, holding on to Africa pot, holding on to broom, holding on to padlock. Are you a native, are you a witch daughter, a native daughter? It, I, this is not even paganism. Or, this is pure witchcraft. This is pure juju practice in the church. First prophets. And they are truly selling, they are, they, are, they are selling, they are making money, making names for themselves. All because the believers will not want to sit with the Holy Spirit. One of the things we must do, ministers of the gospel, is to return to the Holy Spirit. Teach the believers. I'm not talking about the new converts. Many believers who have been in church for years, they don't know the Holy Ghost. They don't know Him. They don't have a relationship with him. When Paul said to the Corinthians, when he prayed for the Corinthians, not said, when he prayed for the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship, the kononia of the Holy Spirit be with you all, Paul truly had a desire that the believers, the Corinthians, should know the Holy Spirit. How? He said that they will know the communion. The communion is... The pathway to knowing this Holy Spirit. If you want to know the Holy Spirit, you have to give yourself to communion. Fellowship is not recitation we have on Sundays after church fellowship or church service. No, fellowship is what you do. You give your time to the Holy Spirit. You make up your mind. I want to know Him. The one that Jesus said is here now. For the believers, he's here now for the church. I want to walk with him. I want to know him. If you know the Holy Spirit, he will tell you in your heart, that guy there is not, is not my servant. That guy is not my friend. That church, don't go there. That one, yeah, they are few. They, they don't have what others have. I am in that, I'm in their midst. You need to know the Holy Spirit for yourself. You need to know the Holy Ghost for yourself. You need to know him. And I'm not talking about waiting in a church to just lift your hands and shake and their feet. Oh, I feel the whole anointing here. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about relationship, consistent relationship with the Holy Spirit. You are consistent. After five years, ten years, you are still there. You are still pursuing, uh, you are still pursuit of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I'm saying to you, child of God, that is growing to become son of God, I'm saying to you, press on, don't give up because that's how it works. But Christianity, that you want everything to be done for you, Papa, Mama, anointing, anointing oil, broom, padlock, handkerchief, all of these things, they will not take you too far. They will not take you too far. You know why? They take your eyes off the Holy Spirit. This is what false prophets have done. They make people, believers, to focus on objects, mottos, uh, symbols of the Holy Spirit. By doing this, they take their eyes away from the personality of the Holy Spirit. Now, the water is more important to some believers than the personality of the Holy Spirit. By this I'm saying, if you, if the Holy Spirit stands and you present water, say choose between the two, many believers today, they will go for water because for them, our church, we know they joke with water. <laughs> our church, we don't play with water, we take it serious because that is the power of God. Who told you? That's a lie. Water. It's as long as the man of God blesses the water, there's power in it. What about the Holy Ghost? What about the Holy Ghost? He said, Well, we pray on Akachif, we pray on sand. We can my our pastor can pray on anything and if we work. Listen, what you don't understand is that it may work, but you will not get to know the Holy Spirit. And it, that simply means somebody's changing you, somebody's lying to you, deceiving you. 
Go back to the scripture, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit. And I say to you, you have to test the spirit. Test the spirit. Let's go on. Because many false prophets have gone out to the world. As at the time of John, I, you can see my hand going back many years ago. John said, many false prophets are going to the world. Now, now, we have multitude of false prophets in the world. Multitude of false prophets. And it says, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is of God. This is what you need to know. It's of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Antichrist is already in the world. It's right here. But you need to hear this. The world says you can know a false prophet by the confession. Hmm. This, is, this is very important. You can know a false prophet by not just the lifestyle, because if you are watching out for the lifestyle, maybe this first prophet knows that you are watching out for the lifestyle. He has been able to put a system in place that makes him look like a saint, very holy. He has all the religious uh, expression, so you can't catch him. You can't catch him. But Jesus, uh, John is telling us here, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is of first, is 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 not of is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is not of God. Get this. Get this. This will help you. What does this mean? What is simply saying here is that when you listen to a man of God, a woman of God, a teacher of the word of God, what he's saying is that if the teaching of this pastor, this apostle, this prophet, evangelist, or uh, teacher, if it's not on the person of Jesus Christ, is saying to you, run away from that person. That if this teacher focuses on Abraham more than Jesus, listen carefully, don't, don't, don't run away. If he focuses on Abraham, <laughs> Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, any of the Old Testament believers, more than the person of Jesus Christ, he says to you, run away. Is that what he's saying here? Exactly what he's saying here. You know why? Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Everything that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah, name any, any name, any name you can think of in the Old Testament, Whatever they came to to execute for the Heavenly Father is what is now represented in the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the express image of the Father. Of the Father. Anything you want to know about our Father today is in the person of Jesus Christ. Not in Abraham, not in Isaac, not in Moses, not in Elijah, not in any of the prophets or the law. Get this. So, and he said here, the one that would not confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the one that has that came to fulfill the law, the word of God says is a false prophet. Get this. So false prophets will come to you, they will tell you where well, we have the power as of old. We have the double portion of Elijah anointing. You can see that is the error. It will tell you where the anointing that God gave to Elisha. You know, Elijah, Elisha had double. Now the Lord has given me double of that Elisha anointing. Oh, it will tell you where the kind of power that was in the life of Jeremiah. These false prophets, these false apostles, they will not point you to Jesus Christ. You will not hear them really teaching you intentionally. That is the word, intentionally by the person of Jesus Christ. They will not teach you about the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They talk about Jesus in passing. They can just quote scripture. They mention the name of Jesus Christ. They say one or two things about Jesus Christ. But they will not, they will not intentionally teach you about the life, the ministry, the, result, the death and burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They will not do that. They will not. For them... Because they want to deceive you, they 
tell you whatever wherever we teach from in the bible is just okay it, it is the word of god why i'm sharing this with you because i'm going to show you also why it is all about jesus christ now it's all about jesus christ quickly let's go to the book of hebrews and see for ourselves if what i'll be saying to you is in the bible it's in the word of god it's all about jesus christ not about moses okay i can say that again not about elijah not about uh, abraham abraham is our father but it's not about him imagine jesus saying to them he said look the things i teach you the things i said to you abraham could not before abraham i am and they picked up stone to stone him because jesus jesus simply meant that everything you need to know now is represented in me because i am the express image of the father in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews 11, oh my God, time is gone. Oh, we did not start uh, start uh, at 8 on the dot, so we have some few minutes more. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, you see all the men and women, not every one of them, some of them that worked with God, that did exploits, they are written in the book of Hebrews 11. Take your time and read. Hebrews 11, the men that walked with God. If you want to know what it means to walk with God, you see here, e Abel, Enoch, Noah, Noah, Abraham, you see Joseph, you see Sarah, all the names are here. Then you come to, oh, Moses is here too. I still want to call us more names for you. Then you see Gideon, Barak, Jephthah, Samson, David, Samuel. These are men and women that walked with God. I've not called the women. Rahab is there. Deborah. Well, I don't know Deborah is here. But Esther is there too. They all had a walk with God. Listen to me carefully. After all these names are mentioned here and the things they did. Now if you come to chapter 12, verse 1, listen to the word of God. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, with the believers today, we are surrounded by these men. They are not dead. They are alive in the spirit. The Bible tells us that God, Jesus tells us that God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So Abraham is alive in the spirit. Praise God for that. Now, it says here, we are surrounded by them. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin which easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that I said before us. Get this. Don't miss this. Then he says, looking on to Jesus the author and the finish of our faith. In other words, don't look unto Abraham. Don't look unto Moses. Don't look unto Jeremiah. Don't look unto Isaiah. Don't look unto Enoch. Look unto Jesus. So first prophet will make you look unto Isaiah, make you look unto Enoch. I'm not saying that you should not read the Bible to learn the how Isaiah walked with God, how Jeremiah walked with God, you can learn from them. But when it comes to knowing the Father, we know the Father in the person of Jesus Christ today. Okay, every revelation is now in the person of Jesus Christ. Get this, it's now in the person of Jesus Christ. First prophet will not will not give you the revelation of Jesus Christ that will help you to connect with your Father in heaven. The only perfect man that ever lived, one, without a fault, according to the word of God that tells us Jesus Christ was without sin. Okay? He was tempted in all things without sin. He's the only one. Not Abraham. Not Moses. Not Isaiah. Not one. He's the only one. He's the only one. So first prophets, they will not do this. They will not, they will not point you to Jesus Christ. He says, looking unto Jesus Christ, they ought to on the finish of our faith. Now, Jesus Christ at... Uh, at the, at the Lord's Supper, before, he, before his death, the Bible says he had supper with his disciples. The first thing he did was that he took the bread, he broke it, and he said, This is my body broken for you. After which, he took the wine and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant. That is it. He said, This is the blood of the new covenant. There is something called the new covenant, and there is also the old covenant. The old covenant. Unfortunately, the first prophets, they focused on the old covenant because they have no revelation of the new covenant. Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant. We are new covenants, new covenant believers. What that simply means is that we should teach the new covenant reality. 
the new covenant, which is about Jesus Christ. And the beauty of the new covenant is that when we get to know our Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus said in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So it is through Jesus that we get to know the Father. No matter how any man will want to tell you about Joseph, Abraham, Isaac, Isaiah, you will not be able to catch the revelation of the Father through them. You will not. This is the dilemma. This is the problem. You will not be able to catch the revelation of the Father through all of them in the Old Covenant. But it is only through Jesus Christ that you can catch easily by the help of the Holy Ghost the revelation of the Father. The revelation of the Father. So you cannot come to the Father through Abraham, through Isaiah. No, it's only through Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus. This is why you have many orphans in the church, many fatherless believers. They have not been able to come to the Father through Jesus Christ. They are still tied down with all the teachings from the Old Testament. Testament, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Let, let's read the Word of God. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 3, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. And we have sought trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us, who also made us sufficient, I beg your pardon, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Did you hear that? God the Father made us ministers of the new covenant. I'm not a minister of the old covenant. No, I don't minister the old covenant. I minister the new covenant. The new covenant is about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not about Abraham. <laughs> it's not about Isaac. They, they, all of them point us to Jesus Christ. All of them that ever came, they point us to Jesus Christ. And as we, as, as we look at Jesus Christ, we see the Father in Jesus Christ. The Father had wanted to come to Abraham, to Isaac, to even Adam in the garden, then uh, through uh, Moses. But they could not pay the price. They could not surrender to Talim for the Father to come to them. Finally, the Father came to Jesus Christ. Finally, the Father came to Jesus Christ. And this is the breakthrough. This is the good news that we can come into relationship, intimacy, oneness with our Father now. What Abraham could not do, what Moses could not do, what Adam could not do, what Jeremiah could not do, call any name, Malachi, all of them, none of them could do it. But Jesus Christ did it. This is amazing. He did it. And he made us ministers of the new covenant. So it's all about Jesus Christ. I'm not saying, please get me, hear my heart, hear me by the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying for someone who is just not, probably not grounded, maybe the Holy Spirit has not opened his eyes yet to understand the new covenant. That is a false prophecy. Don't get me wrong. It is possible that someone, this is not clear to this person. I used to teach from everywhere, everywhere, all the names. But now, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I know better that this is about a new covenant. It's about Jesus Christ. So if I have to tell you something about Abraham, about Isaac, about from the book, the old covenant, all I'm trying to do is to help you to see the person of Jesus Christ in the old covenant. The person of Jesus Christ, because as you see Jesus Christ, you see the Father at work in him. The long suffering of the Father, the mercy of the Father, the love of the Father, the grace, all that the Father is, is now represented in the person of Jesus Christ. So we are ministers of the new covenant. Ministers of the new covenant, not the old covenant. You see, this is how you know a false prophet. A false prophet. First prophet cannot spend one hour to talk to you about Jesus Christ. Mm. He will get lost. He will not have something to say because he has no relationship with Jesus Christ. He does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Here it is it, here. It's here. I'm not talking about he cannot call the name of Jesus Christ, but no relationship. Where? Matthew chapter 5. Look at it. Listen to this. Look at it. Listen, listen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. 39. 39. Where are you now? It's here. You see, you search, you search the scripture, the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, 
and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Here is Jesus Christ. He says, don't just tell me what, what, is, what is in the Bible, what the Bible says. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said, come to me. Come to Jesus Christ and you will have life. So when we come to Jesus Christ, when we know Jesus Christ, our tongue, our mouth will talk Jesus Christ. We will talk Jesus Christ. We will not just talk scriptures. We talk Jesus Christ that we have been with. We've met. We've encountered. We talk Jesus Christ. We've experienced him. He has touched our lives. We have, he's at work in us. We talk Jesus Christ. Because he's real in our lives. Say, come to me and you will have life. Not to Abraham. Not to Isaac. Not to Jeremiah. Come to Jesus Christ. This is how you know false prophets. This is how you know false prophets. This is how you know. Remember, anybody can call the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody can call the name. Anybody. But can you talk Jesus Christ? Can you live Jesus Christ? Can Jesus express his through you as a pastor, as a minister? This is where we are. Thank you, Father in heaven. We praise you. We praise you. That through your word, we are delivered from the lies of false prophets. Thank you, Father. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you glory. That this day, the day has come to pull down illegitimate authors and orders that false prophets have used to, to enslave your people. Thank you, gracious Father. You are breaking barriers. You are breaking shackles. Set your people free from oppression of false prophets. Thank you, false apostles, false pastors. Thank you, Father, for setting your people free because everyone we know the Father. Every believer will cry, Haba, Father. Thank you for freedom from oppression of false prophets. Give your praise, give your glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We stop right here. Thank you for being part of this wonderful time in the presence of the Father. I'm looking forward by God's grace that we meet here again on Friday. We have to look at the second part of this. How to identify a false prophet. Thank you again. Bye-bye.